What's up guys, Juice Messi here, and welcome to a brand new video. Welcome to a daily dose of transfer gossip. Today is Friday the 12th of August, and I've just checked, and this is episode number 89 of my summer transfer series, which is pretty cool, and we will reach 100 before the window closes. So before we start guys, as always, if you can smash 1,500 likes, that'd be absolutely awesome. If you're new to my channel, click that subscribe button for daily FIFA content, and in the comments below, let me your thoughts on today's rumors, and let me know what rumors I should do in the next episode. And finally, if you missed yesterday's video, be down below in that description box guys, eight is transfers and after 9 p.m. is the second video of the day. So the very first confirmed transfer today is going to be a legendary card from FIFA Ultimate Team in particular, Eltham. He is one of the best pro silver cards we've ever seen, and especially over the last two years, has had a really good tots card, which has been really expensive. But that could well be coming to an end now, because unfortunately for us, apparently he's been released by his current club in the Saudi Pro League, Al Fateh. But this could be very similar to the Polish cam that I mentioned the other day. Uh, the very first day it said it was released, but the next day he had a new club. So I will update you in tomorrow's episode. Episode. Next player is going to Luke Ayling, going to Leeds United. That is from Bristol City for £750,000 on a three-year deal. He's a centre-back on FIFA Ultimate Team, but I think he's actually a full-back in real life. Then we go on to uh, Louis Saloniak, and this one is actually for a guy in the comments uh, called Big Horn Sheepy or something. He's mentioned it for the last like three or four days at least. It's probably a lot more than that, but he's joined Chicago Fire from Colorado Rapids in a trade deal. So apologies, I've not covered that, but it wasn't actually on the site I use. Then we go on to uh, Tim Cahill going to Melbourne City. That is from the Chinese team Hangzhou Greentown on a free transfer. So he will be on FIFA 17 and he could potentially get a tot if he has a good year. And that's going to be a really cool card for nostalgic purposes. Now we go on to a Swedish goalkeeper, Andreas Isaacson. The former Man City goalkeeper and former national team goalkeeper for Sweden may even be their current one in fact. Um, has gone back to the Swedish league in particular, uh, that club right there. I think it's called Jagardens or something. But either way, he joined it from the Turkish club Kazanpasa on an undisclosed field. Next up, we got Jonathan Woodgate going to Liverpool, but luckily not as a player. In fact, he's now joined us as an official scout for Portugal and Spain. And we're all probably fully aware how his time at Real Madrid actually went down and uh, is, is a horrible debut. It's one of the worst debuts I've ever seen. If you've never seen it, go on YouTube after this video and search it up. But hopefully he's better at scouting there than he was playing. Next up, we got uh, Duarte today being released by Ajax. And I imagine he could have a new club again in the next couple of days. Then we go on to Jordan Bataka, a 5 star scorer on FIFA Ultimate Team, falling out of Leeds United, gone on loan to Charlton Athletic. And on Twitter last year, I'm pretty sure I saw quite a few Leeds fans annoyed he didn't really get too much of an opportunity where he did play, obviously he's a flair type player, but didn't get many minutes. And Charlton were relegated last season to League One, so I'm assuming he'll get more minutes down there. Then we go on to Igalo, signing a new deal at Watford until 2021. Next up, we got Joshua King, again, signing a new deal at Bournemouth this time until 2020. They also tied down Callum Wilson to a long-term contract earlier this summer. Then we got onto Paddy McNair going to Sunderland from Manchester United. It's actually part of a double deal, so the other player going to Sunderland from United was a player called Donald Love. They announced that as a double signing for £5.5 million, pounds, but apparently McNair cost them 4.5 and Love cost them one. And now we've got a new striker for West Ham United. That is going to the young Argentinian striker, Jonathan Caleri. He's joined them on a loan deal from the Uruguayan club Maldonado, and they've actually paid £4 million pounds to get him on loan. He spent last season out on loan at Sao Paulo in the Brazilian league, and also, I think it was bought by Maldonado from Boca Juniors back in January. So I'm not too sure what their plans are for him. The final one today is going to be a club record FIFA Swansea, Borja Baston. The Spaniard has joined from Atletico Madrid for £15.5 million. Some places are also saying that could rise up to £17 million with additional fees. And that beats their previous record of Wilfred Boney for £12 million from Vitesse. Then we go on to potential deals and first up, Moose Sissoko. And the headline says Sissoko waiting for real deal. So I'm not too sure if Madrid are going to come in for him. But if they do... I mean, the guy's been waiting a long, long time. Sissoko's stock rose after some pretty impressive performances for France at Euro 2016. And multiple times he has stated he does not want to remain at St. James's Park and play in the Skybet Championship. He recently spoke to the BBC and his quotes read, I hope Real will come for me. I'm still waiting. If Real Madrid are interested in you, then of course you'll be happy. But right now, I am still a Newcastle player. So this guy to me, Honestly, he's like such a massive tool. For the whole summer, he's mentioned how he deserves to move away and stuff and wants to play in the Champions League for a top, top club. But in all honesty, he needs to put in the effort. We saw at Euro 2016, this guy can be a really decent player. Puts in a massive shift, has a great work ethic. But for most games for Newcastle last season, I'm led to believe didn't put in a shift whatsoever. Next up, we've got a player that's not on FIFA Ultimate Team. I know a few of you may quote me in the comments for saying that. As yes, I did read them yesterday. We were quoting the stuff I say in videos, guys. So that's going to be Timothy Foster Mensah. According to the Daily Mail, he's agreed a new long-term contract with Manchester United. And the announcement for it is set to be made in the coming days. So quite a big one for them, as there was reports saying 
he would be sold. And that is after his breakthrough season, alongside uh, Marcus Rashford, of course it was, and Borthwick Jackson. Next up, we've got Arsenal's Serge Gnabry linked to Hertha Berlin in the Bundesliga. According to the Evening Standard, Hertha Berlin have ended their interest in Arsenal's Serge Gnabry, and they will not take the midfielder on a season-long loan. So he's actually impressing quite a bit currently at the Olympic Games. I think he's in like four or five goals. He's doing quite well for himself, uh, albeit they two of them were against Fiji the other day in a 10-0 win. Last season, he went out on loan to West Brom. I don't think he played too much. Now we move on to a uh, George Kevin and Kudu linked to Spurs again. But it is not good news. Apparently, talks now broken down between Spurs and Marseille over the winger and Kudu. That is according to Sky sources. We understand the issue concerns the payment structure of the deal. There's been a massive stalemate over this deal, which has been worsened by the hierarchical changes at Marseille. And I'm not too sure whether this deal was mentioned during Pochettino's press conference yesterday. That, of course, ahead of the new Premier League season. Next up, we've got Stephen Defoe linked to new boys at Burnley. Although the Lancashire Telegraph are saying that Burnley are set to miss out on Defoe after UAE side Al Jazeera agreed a 7 million euro fee with Anderlecht for the Belgian midfielder. And unless Burnley up their bid, they will not get him. But I think I was checking earlier, I think Burnley currently have only spent like £3 million. And to be fair, the manager did say yesterday, I think it's Sean Dyche, whatever his name is, I did mention how they probably will have to break their club record fee this summer. But on who, we'll have to wait and see. Next up, we got Felipe Melo linked for move back to Galatasaray. According to Fnatic, Galatasaray will try to re-sign into midfielder Felipe Melo after failing to agree a deal with Liverpool for Lucas Leiva. And talking about Lucas Leiva, according to Daily Mirror, Jurgen Klopp blocked Lucas Leiva's move from Liverpool to Galatasaray at the last minute. The German manager is concerned that the midfielder's departure would leave him short due to injury concerns. And the next player is also linked to Galatasaray, but also Arsenal, Jason Denier. Arsenal battling Galatasaray to sign Manchester City defender Jason Denier. The 21-year-old is believed to favour a return to Turkey on loan. He was linked to Arsenal about three weeks or so ago, and the fee mentioned was around £14 million. That is one four for those that cannot understand me, but according to Manchester Evening News, they're also saying this. Jason Denier could move to Galatasaray permanently after spending last season on loan there. But personally, I think it'll be a loan deal. Next up, we go on to Bertrand Traore going to Ajax. According to The Telegraph, Ajax have agreed a deal to sign Chelsea starlet Bertrand Traore on a season-long loan deal. And that will be good for him. He'll get first-team opportunities. I think he got a few at the end of last season, but that was due to injuries and stuff. But going to Ajax, he'll definitely get minutes. And I'm genuinely surprised he's not gone to Vitesse. Then we go on to James Chester linked to Villa. Various different sources are saying that Villa have agreed a fee in excess of £8 million for West Brom defender James Chester. And that is quite a surprising one given the fact that Middlesbrough were linked a couple of days ago, even, even up to yesterday I think it was. They also linked though Aston Villa to Richie Delight from Leicester and also Mile Yedinak. And again, various different sources are saying the Villa are in for these three players. Uh, no fee be mentioned for either of them, but I imagine not too much. So James Chester has Premier League experience, also has uh, quite a bit of international experience now after Euro 2016. We also have Richie Delight, who helped Middlesbrough last season gain promotion. And I think Yednak was Crystal Palace's uh, captain at one point. He may even still be. Next up, we go on to Julian Weigel, linked to Real Madrid. According to a newspaper called De Vesten, Real Madrid are keen on Borussia Dortmund midfielder Julian Weigel. The 20-year-old impressed during his first campaign at Borussia Dortmund last term, and the Bundesliga Giants are looking to extend his current contract. However, they may have to ward off interest from Real Madrid, as apparently they're eyeing up the German international as they believe he could provide good cover, very good cover, for Brazilian anchorman Casemiro who himself had a very good breakout season last year for Real Madrid. And that is after going out alone to FC Porto the year before. At Porto, they're so, they're so great for players. It gives them so much confidence. And also, they build a lot of superstars. Or they buy them and then make them into superstars, sorry. So next up, we have got Juan Mata linked to Everton. According to the Times, Everton are exploring the possibility of signing Juan Mata from Manchester United. The Spaniard is still wanted by Jose Mourinho, but would rather leave for first-team football. And it's not the first time he's been to Everton. In fact, multiple times over this summer, that has been the case. And Ronald Koeman yesterday did mention how he wants to sign at least three more players. Well, I think it's three or four. Balassi, of course, is one of those. And Jagielka will be staying. Again, though, at least according to the manager. Now we move on to Christian Teo, another Spaniard, this time linked to Fiorentina. According to AS, Barcelona midfielder Christian Teo is said to join Fiorentina on loan with an 8 million euro option to make the deal permanent. He's also been linked to multiple Premier League clubs. I think one of them were Swansea City. Now move on to Jeffrey Schlupp. According to the Daily Mirror, West Brom have made an improved offer of £11 million for Leicester City fullback Jeffrey Schlupp. They had a £9 million offer rejected earlier this summer. I think at this point in time, he's probably the third choice left back behind Ben Chilwell, who recently signed a new deal, and the main one, Christian Fuchs. And Christian Fuchs actually followed me on Twitter yesterday, which is pretty damn cool. 
Now we move on to Christian Benteke, another player linked to West Brom. So according to The Guardian today and also multiple other sources including Sky Sports News, West Brom have entered the Benteke race. So then the article reads, West Brom are ready to rival Crystal Palace for Liverpool striker Christian Benteke. And they'll not sell Sergio Berahino until they've signed a replacement. So they, they're kind of playing a bit of hardball right now for Berahino. He's linked to likes of Stoke City and Palace. And right now, I think Palace are also linked to Niasi. That is the guy from Everton on loan. So Benteke, I imagine we'll probably actually somehow get the 32.5 we paid for him, which is absolutely crazy. But that is just how it works nowadays with the Premier League money. And I think if we do sell Benteke, our net spend is essentially even. There's also a few other players at Deadwood that could be sold as well. The likes of Balotelli to add on top of that. So I think uh, Klopp did say one or two more players is a massive possibility. So we could still not be done in the market or I'm pretty sure we won't be. Now we move on to Juan Cuadrado linked to AC Milan. According to Gazzetta dello Sport in Italy, they're saying AC Milan want to sign Cuadrado from Chelsea, but cast back his reluctancy to join West Ham is preventing the move from being finalised. And I did mention it the other day that if I was a West Ham fan personally, I wouldn't want Cast Backer because, because he doesn't really seem to be set for West Ham. He wants to hold out for another club um, at least until the last minute. So personally, again, I wouldn't go for him. Now we move on to the next player, uh, Mustafi. Sky in Germany are reporting that Valencia defender Mustafi has agreed to join Arsenal. Sky also understand the negotiations will continue today as the guys try to wrap up a deal for the German international. But the deal is still far from completion. Arsene Wenger is desperate for defensive reinforcements following injuries to Per Mertesacker and Gabriel and could weigh out up to £30 million for Mustafi. We understand the 24-year-old is still training with Valencia. But it finally looks like Arsenal could sign another player. Now finally today, we've gone to James Rodriguez. According to Dragonese, despite Zinedine Zidane insisting he wants to keep James Rodriguez, Real Madrid are willing to listen to offers for the Colombian. And there were rumours before in Marca saying that a Premier League club or multiple Premier League clubs had bid £80 million for him. But there we have it guys. There is all today's potential transfers as well as the confirmed stuff at the very beginning. So, as always, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button. 1,000 fire is likes to be absolutely awesome. If you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button for the daily feed for content. In the comments below, let me your thoughts on today's rumors, the rumors I should do in the next episode. And if you missed yesterday's video, it'll be down below in that description box, guys. 8 minutes transfers, and after 9 p.m. is the second video of the day. So, thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you next time.